see. I'll let you know once it's live. Properly loading. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're now live. So uh, hi, everyone, and welcome back to another TAC Talk featuring Joachim Schleser from Schleser, Schleser Saddlery. That's a tongue twister. Um, today, we're talking about stirrup leathers, and we're also going to get into some discussion on tack cleaning if we have time. So we'll just get right into it. Joachim, you can get started, yeah. and then we'll all keep an eye for questions and anything um, else. All right, so I think we should start uh, with the tack cleaning first and Perfect. then go into stirrup leather. Stirrup leather is uh, pretty straightforward. And um, I'm gonna ask you some questions then we can create a little dialogue. Yeah. So tack cleaning is uh, pretty straightforward, but yet very uh, confusing. And I thought I, I prepared some slides. So I'd like to share that with you. Perfect. Both. And then um, you guys, and look, so you, you've seen that picture here before yeah. where uh, we have the saddle between the two being the horse and the rider. So we need to protect it from weather such as cold, wet, lots of sun and friction, but also from sweat. Now, normally we have a saddle pad underneath the saddle. Certain areas, they don't ride saddles with saddle pads on an English saddle. So the saddle is built in certain areas with different types of leather. Okay, some is vetch tan, some is um, chrome tanning, some is a mixed tanning. So we need to understand when we clean tack, okay? So there is all kinds of things to find on video, uh, on, on YouTube or on, on the internet. And there's how to clean your shoes, how to clean your leather furniture, it's all leather. Mm -hmm. But I think the main understanding is uh, certain products are really, really mean like if you use um, uh, saddle cleaning on your leather furniture, you might be very disappointed in the end. Yeah. So what I th thought I should start with this slide here where it shows very quick, quick how often the leather is um, wet, like constantly wet. So we, we, we start off step one, um, preservation. That means when the leather, well, let's start back, when, when the, a uh, butcher killed the cow for meat. Um, they will then take the hide and auction it off on the world market. And these auctions are quite regular and people from all over the world auction these hides. Now you can imagine some people buy the hide from South America or from, from Europe or whatever. And the time where the hike goes from the butcher or from the auction place to the tannery can be sometimes a long time. Mm -hmm. So what they do, they put heavy duty salt on it or they dry it out in the sun. In the sun, they do it in very, very um, uh, rare occasion. You see it in India, you see it in South America, because when you ship the raw hide, it's very heavy and yeah. freight is very often priced by weight. Yeah, very if expensive. If you dry it, it's of course lighter. So the good leather, what we understand is good leather as saddle a manufacturer or you as a rider, very rare is dry uh, preserved. Okay. And because it's, it's not wet mm -hmm. enough, it's not soft enough. It doesn't move, feels good on your knee, on your seat, mm -hmm. on the horse's back. So very often it's wet preserved, which means heavy duty salt. So when it comes to step two, um, re-wetting, re re right? So yeah. that's when it's uh, dried, or they also do step two when they have to wash all the salt out. Step three is uh, draining. So they drain all the stuff out. There's a lot of water and then they dry it. Yeah, and then, then they go, this is actually drying it. Then they go into the actual tanning. Again, the leather is, in this drum where it sits up to, oh, well, there you go, 30 to 40 days, right? So it sits there. Then it gets dried again. And then it gets rolled and processed so it's nice and smooth. So that's the veg tank. So here you see how they sort through all the different hides at these auctions. And then when it comes to the tannery and they take this from one bin to the next and they, it's, it's pretty gross stuff. Yeah, that's crazy. And, it, and it's, um, the old fashioned way. It's pretty cool stuff. If you ever really want to get into it, all you have to do is Google 
um, medieval tanning times or modern tanning times. In the modern tanning times, they have these machine which soak these hides in and out. And you can see it's constantly in water. Weird. And then these scrums, where it's like this picture, this scrum here is like a giant wash machine. Wow, that's insane. And hides sit there forever and they tumble and with the tanning mix come from this animal hide. 90% in, um, in question, we use cow hides. We used to use a lot of pig and a lot of sheep, but now it's 90% cow. Very is there rare. a reason? Like is cow hide better or is it? Yes, it's cow hide is better. And the people from today demand softness rather than for lasting. Mm -hmm. The pig skin barely ever, ever breaks. It's yeah. super, super tough. So old saddles built in the, uh, after the 40s or even before that, uh, I started my saddlery in the 78 and they just said, well, we stopped using pig skin in late 60s. So when you see saddles made in the 50s, 60s, the seed is rock hard and the leather yeah. super tough. So, so is the pig skin like the leather that when like it's like uh, it, uh, it's hard like it's almost like when you touch it it's like slippery like yeah and like yeah yeah okay, it has cool. a very slippery so it's hard slippery and then the consumer says hey I want something more sticky so they change it of course to a uh, more chemical tanned and um, different uh, <laughs> hides like the cows. So here, even through the machine, you can see all this water there. So most, most people are mm -hmm. afraid when they clean their tap to use water. Or get wet in the rain. That's a huge one that I've seen. Yeah, yeah they all get afraid. I remember when Wintech came out, one of the biggest sales pitch was, hey, you can wash your saddle. Well, what's the difference to the leather? You can still wash the leather saddle. Mm -hmm. So as you see here, the whole time, the whole time it's wet. Even when it's in the drying process, so they have these clips and their precious hides out all the way out, right? So here you see people using um, machines. They, they pull them out and then they dry it and then they tan it and again. And then they put the dye on it. So the inexpensive leather, they just spray it with a spray gun. The medium leather, it's very labor intense. I seen that live. This guy has a brush where you brush your horse with. <laughs> like a fine brush and mm -hmm. there's all day and rub that hair. Wow. It's insane. And the stink you cannot imagine. Oh, yeah, bad. And then the, the modern uh, or the, they call it drum dyed, they put that back after they've done all this into this giant bin, gets totally soaked again with dye this time. And the last process is the tanning, uh, the, the oils or the various, um, well, creams they put on it what makes it sticky cool what does like vegetable tanned actually mean then is like most riding leather vegetable tanned or like is it chemically tanned or right so the old-fashioned way they use that only this message uh, wedge tan and mm -hmm. wedge tan means um in the old ways they had the entire leather wedge tan but they noticed all oh, the flap cracks this seed bleaches out the dye doesn't hold in and we want brown, we want black, we want a red brown, we want a chestnut brown, and the dye doesn't hold up so nice. So the industry figured out, oh, if we do chrome tan, it's softer, it's easier to work with, it's faster to make. I don't need months and months. I can make this in a couple of weeks. So time is money, right? So the, everybody likes the mixed tan, which is half wedge, half chrome, Right? And then there's, of course, the complete chrome, like you build it. Most saddles have complete chrome tanning. Okay. Negative, it's very stiff, very hard. So if you mix it, you have all this softness, fast tanning, blah, blah, blah. If you just go wedge tan, it doesn't last long, you know, and it, it, it has all these different colors. So it's a, it's a great sales pitch and in high fashion they use it or, or in shoes but it gets very mm, blotchy, I want to say. Which yeah, I think I have some stuff that must be vegetable tan then because it, it's kind of, is it the leather that kind of when it wears, it gets like the worn, like the distressed leather, not like distressed as in the leather is actually breaking, but like the dye gives way to make it kind of look like 
um, it's been, I guess, bleached in some areas or um, off. not necessary because it could be one of the um, way they dyed it. Maybe they just sprayed it on. Okay. They brush it in. The real good expensive one, the dye goes all the way through the leather. Cool. So the cost is how much time does the hide went through production and how much labor goes on. So I can buy a very, very nice Italian leather for a square meter of 38 euros or for 50 euros, right? So that, and, and your naked eye doesn't see it, but when you put it in water, you stretch it, you form it, you stitch it, you kind of feel it. You said, ah, oh, this product, very hard to make a saddle from, but very cheap, or has a lot of wrinkles, or mm, the water doesn't go deep enough, which means the dye probably didn't go deep enough, which means the dye comes out fast and you see what you saw, the blotchiness, right? Mm -hmm. So what I really want to bring across today is um, think about the cowhide. Let's pretend the saddle is cowhide. Most of them are. It's very, very similar to human hide. Okay? It's, it's a lot of water we have in our skin. And they say up to over 65, 70% of our skin is water. Now, when it's dyed, the cowhide, which is similar to the human skin, it's still 5%. If you have a nice leather saddle and you leave it outside when it's super cold, the whole saddle is stiff. Yeah. Okay? So the moisture in the leather kind of froze. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah. okay? or if you live in Maryland or in any other countries where it's super, super humid, and you look not after your saddle, it starts to mold. Mm -hmm. Too much moisture going in. Okay, so there is this fine line between keeping the cowhide or leather not too dry, not too wet. The best way to store it is where you're comfortable in, mm -hmm. in the right humidity level. Okay? You don't like to be super dry. I mean, if I don't know if you ever. Um, driven your truck and trailer all the way down to Temecula or even further mm -hmm. down to San Diego area where it's super dry. Your lips are always choppy and it's, wow, it's just like the desert, mm -hmm. right? And that's how the leather instantly dries out. Or I know you are in NBC and considered a little bit more wetter than mm -hmm. another area. And I don't know your summer. Is it a super, super humid summer? Like not cold. lately like we've been having like last summer was a huge drought so like we kind of got a taste of what it's like to live in a desert because we had like two full months without rain which is like unheard of here because it usually rains all the time but generally speaking like our challenges would probably be more related to the wet because the drought is unusual and it's probably um, more of like a climate change induced thing than actually our climate so like that's why with with my attack like a lot of people here still stand by like, oh, don't ride in your saddle in the rain. And like, I don't have an indoor, so I've always had to ride in the rain. Um, and like, they've been fine. But that's a huge one that I see people saying, especially with the really like nice, expensive leather saddles that are the soft leather. Yeah. So I, I would say, let's start off by um, tell me what you think, in your opinion, is the worst thing for leather. Um, I would say probably like like worse the where i would be most concerned about damage to my saddle i would say like that i reg that not regular that that i do would be the seawater like when you go down to the beach like that's why i don't like i'm really careful how far you go into the water because the salt water dries out the leather really really fast um the rain is one that like i used to be but now that i've ridden a bunch in the rain like the only real complaint I have about that is that if you don't clean the saddle right after and wipe it down it gets like the little water droplet marks but they cool. go away um the dryness I would say is what I noticed the most in the summer because like I my saddle was always like even when you're like I don't usually clean it all the time or oil it all the time because I know that that can like overdoing it's bad too but in the summertime when we weren't getting like any moisture whatsoever and everything was dry the tack and leather was just like it, it dried out almost instantly like you'd oil it a couple days like ago and then it would be dry again and like looking thirsty so um so either yeah, yeah another question what happens if you go outside and you are exposing your skin a lot to the sun it dies. Yeah, it's not good. 
it's it's sunburn. Right? Yeah. So what do you do if you have no chance, you have no indoor, and you hate to wear big cowboy hats and baseball caps, just pretend. Okay. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. So it's a kind of a moisture which protects your skin from the UV. Mm -hmm. And the same with leather. Leather hates the sun. Okay. So in this whole uh, tanning process, you see there's a lot of drying, you know, mm -hmm. drying, drying, right? So, um, but there is a lot of wetting uh, again. They just dry it to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. So dry, a special sun is a big enemy. So that's number one. Number two, what happens to your skin if you take a shower and you ladder yourself up with, with the soap and you leave the soap on. Every it time gets you, dry. <laughs> yeah. Dry and what else? And itchy, probably. Itchy. And what yeah. is it itchy? Um, I don't know. So Dryness. The, soap, the acidic of the soap is meant to go, let's say this is the fingers is the layer of the skin. So your, your soap goes into the pores, into the fibers, loosens up the dirt and brings it up. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, Wash the soap off. Your skin right, will revolt. Mm -hmm. It will get zits, pimples, rashes, reactions. Uh, you irritated from scratching. Mm -hmm. So, what would happen if you leave the laundry soap in the soap? In the it laundry, would, uh, it would ruin your clothes, and it, you'd also probably get itchy from wearing your clothes. So, I love what you said. It ruins the clothes. Right? It is actually the soap but will attack the thread and the fibers of your clothes and eats it away. So both answers are right, but I love that you said it ruins your clothes. Same with your, with your dishwasher. Imagine you just put soap on it and leave it there. Mm -hmm. You would never eat from it. It's gross, it's tacky, it's sticky. Yeah. And all the bacteria is still on your dishes. Yeah. Nobody would leave the soap in the laundry on their skin or on their dishes. Would they leave it on the car? No. Oh God, no. Yeah. Like, yeah, you'd get so like dropped. Now I'm gonna ask you a question. Why do people leave saddle soap in the saddle? I have no like I I only did it because that's like until I talked to you, I never knew because that was just what we were taught to do. No, literally no one ever that I've ever seen clean tack would wipe it off after. So it was just kind so, of yeah, tradition, I guess. So bacteria is still there. It eats away the thread and the fibers on your leather like it does on your clothes. And it wouldn't get pimples or rush the height, but it would die from the inside out. Mm -hmm. If you want to make it even faster, if you want to destroy it faster, then you need to add enemy number three. Enemy number three is the sweat. You already named it. When you sweat and you mm -hmm. lick your skin, it tastes salty. So the salt in the air or in the water where you ride, excuse me, or in the, when the animal sweats. And sometimes if you ride in Arizona, I don't know how these people do it, but by 110, 115, okay? And then you can see their breaches, their butt, everything is completely soaked. Okay, and you can kind of see the outline of the rider's butt and thighs, yeah. the, right? It's completely sweat through. Most people don't do that, but some people do. So on the side of the horse, here where my mouse is, mm -hmm. I'm using this guy here. Okay. On the side of the horse, from the neck on, all the way where my fingers are, all the way here, that's where the horse has the sweat glands. Mm -hmm. The horse sweats the most on the side. So when they are overheated from running away from the line, the wind cools them fast off comes from the side. So mm -hmm. this part here where my mouse is, every saddle, German, English, anywhere you go, they call that sweat flow. The reason was there to, come, to, to soak up the sweat where it comes through the saddle pad. Make sense? Yeah. So I can literally take a saddle and the leather, bend it like this, and I crack that sweat flap like I could crack cardboard, a very thin wood. So when you put the soap into the leather and you leave it there and you put sweat on it and you never remove the sweat. Now you have acid from the sweat, basic mm -hmm. from the soap, 
rotten the leather from the inside out. You don't see it. It starts in the inside where the sweat mm -hmm. and the soap is. So summarize this quick. What we do want is to get rid of the three most enemies. And we attack it with the number one friend, water. 60% on a human or on the cow hide. After tanning, on the leather is still 5% water. So water can loosen the acid in the base. So when I wash my saddle, I wash it just the same as this. I wash my clothes, my car, my body, my dishes. I remove the soap. If I'm saying, oh my God, I don't have time to do that, then I don't let the soap or the sweat dry into it. So same with bits. Very few horseback riders clean the bits the next day. They do it mm -hmm. while the schlauer is still on the bit because it's not baked on. Mm -hmm. it's just it. So the best tack cleaning advice is the following. Bridle. Take the whole bridle and dump it in a bucket. Yeah. Because if the bridle already is full of sweat in the summer, it's, it's sometimes even white here from the sweat and the yeah. soap. Yeah. Dump it in the water because the soap, sorry, the sweat has not yet penetrated. Mm -hmm. Here's the beautiful part. You don't need the stinking soap because it wasn't dropped, the soap wasn't sucked into the fibers of the leather. So then shake the bridle off, take a, a, a rag, rub it a little bit off. You don't have to really dry it. Just mm -hmm. take the big chunks out so it doesn't give you what the rain does, those water drops. And while I'm at the rain, if you ever get rained on it and you want to avoid the water drops, take a wet sponge, make the whole saddle wet even. Boom, never get any water drops. Okay, water is your friend. So then when I'm finished with my, my um, bridle, so I wiped it off, I take like you would take suntan lotion in your hand, right? a group of that, wrap your hands, and then use your hands and rub the scrubs. That's all you need to do. And mm -hmm. your bridle looks like brand new for years. Okay? If you say, I, only, I don't clean my bit, I don't clean my bridle, I do it on Sundays. Man, you need a hoof pick to clean that bit. bit. <laughs> you need to take every buckle apart, everything apart, water and soap, get the gunk out, and for the life, for the... I mean, don't do it for me. We as manufacturers, yeah. those people love you to put soap on it because you buy a very fast new tack because it literally rots. Yeah. Okay, so... It's great if you hear people say, don't take the soap off because they just want you to rot your equipment. So you buy new ones. So I have a question regard, like when you do, like if you actually do need to use soap for like when it's dirty and you've let it soak in, are there like certain ingredients in soap that are like hard nose that you'd like say, stay away from this type of tack cleaner? Yeah. So I, uh, for example, um, in, if you Google, um, cleaning leather, mm -hmm. one of them would use WD-40. Oh, WD no. <laughs> Are you joking? Oh, no. Certain leather, like leather furniture, you can use it because the way it's been tanned. On a saddle, you would rake it. So the best what you hear recommend on leather soap is glycerin. Mm -hmm. glycerin, soap. glycerin soap, it has animal grease inside. <clears throat> which means when you put the soap in it, you also apply to the leather a little bit animal grease and it doesn't take so much the tanning process out. Stay away from Murphy's, Murphy's oil, uh, oil soap. Murphy's oil soap is for wood floor, not mm -hmm. for leather. Oh, and it no. takes all the chemical and all the nice suppleness out of your leather and it strips the dye. So my recommendation on your soap, the best is glycerin soap, but treat it like soap. Mm -hmm. Don't clean it. Don't use soap as suntan lotion or as a leather cream. Right? Nobody says, oh, it's very sunny. I don't have a head. I want to put suntan lotion on and you rub your soap on your cheek. Nobody. Uh, does. Yeah. Nobody. Because they understand, oh, that would itch. So because leather doesn't tell you I'm itching, it just cracks. Mm -hmm. Right. Did that answer your question? Yeah. And then I, my next question would be about like the moisturizers. Are there like any hard nose for like oils or lotions that you put on? Cause like, there's so many on the market, like that, like there's like the needs foot mink oil, uh, like just 
generic saddle oil i don't know what type of oil it actually is or all of the different like leather creams by brand because there's so many different saddle companies that also sell their own stuff so um this this here okay this flap mm -hmm. has two pieces of leather and it's glued together anybody who did a little bit arts and crafts remembers when something has an oily surface the glue never sticks mm -hmm. <coughs> so if you want to destroy your saddle and make the stitches all loose, put oil on it. Mm -hmm. And I mean every second day. Then your saddle, the foam in your seat, the foam in your knee pad, the glue, mm -hmm. the stitches, literally disintegrates. Okay? There is one oil what calls hydrophane, also darkening oil. You mm -hmm. can use it on your bridle, on your saddle, once or twice, maximum three times, to get the desired instant suppleness mm -hmm. and the color you want to darken. It's okay, yeah. but if you use it constantly, <clears throat> you destroy the glue, the foam, etc. The best, what leather loves, the absolutely best is goat grease. So in every third world country, where there's no tax shop on every corner, but there is poor, very poor cowboys or horse people who, who make a living with their horses, driving cattle or go from A to B, they're going to look after the equipment because that's a livelihood. Mm -hmm. Look after them. They, to this day, use what they used for hundreds and hundreds of years, which is goat grease. Very stinky, very messy, but if you put it too much, too bad. You get it in your butt, in your jeans, in your uh -huh. head, but you never destroy the leather. Cool. So obviously you regulate it with your own common sense because you're not want to sit in the grease bath. Mm -hmm. right? So when the leather had enough, it doesn't absorb it. You wait until, depends what you do. They normally give it a, a quill, a, 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 an entire grease bath every three months because that's how often they're going for mm -hmm. long tracks. So in the Western world where we have tax shop and commercial, like you said, tax shops, sorry, Companies promote their own equipment. Or what yeah. it is, they buy that from the same manufacturer, put their label on for branding their product. It's marketing, which is okay. Mm -hmm. So for the consumer, you should look, doesn't matter what name is on it, you should look leather balsam. Mm -hmm. That's the closest to gold grease. Leather balsam, you can use like suntan lotion. So you put it on your hands, rub it, and then use your hands. Sure, you could use a rag or a sponge, but guess what? It all goes into the sponge and you waste half your can and throw the sponge away and then it falls on the ground and then look how your sponge looks. Always put it on your hands because then you never use too much. And it's actually very nice on your skin too. Mm -hmm. So leather balsam is my number one product. So... If I'm really, really lazy, what I do with my saddle when I finish, I take a wet sponge, wipe it off very quick, like I did with my, my bridles, and then I put a big gum while the leather is wet, because now the pores are open, mm -hmm. and rub the saddle wherever my hand can go. That it literally takes me 90 seconds toss. Perfect. Very, very fast. The leather is wet, the pores go in, super. I don't need oil, I don't need soap, bang, bang, bang. So now I use, oh, I don't have time. And I haven't cleaned my saddle for a month. And it really gets cracky, sticky. It looks bad. I need saddle soap. What am I doing with the soap? I rinse it off. Mm -hmm. And when I use a lot of water, I got to put moisture back in. So then I use cream, 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 cream. Every mm -hmm. time you use oil, it goes very fast yeah. through the pores and to the foam, to the stitches, to the glue, to the tree, to the whatever's underneath the saddle. Mm -hmm. um, stay away with um, uh, baby oil or any other crazy oil. Stay, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, big names is just for us consumer to be lured into another yeah. meat. Okay? Yeah. So uh, I hope I, I made this very clear and I really want to bring everybody a vision. There is a lot of water yeah a lot of water right when they skim the high change the height it's constantly wet because mm -hmm. water is the friend 
So if you clean it, use water, even if you dry it. Okay, so water is not the enemy. It is cool. the sun, the acid, which is in your sweat, mm -hmm. salt, the basic what's in your soul. Cool. Yeah. No, that's that's it's so interesting that it's like viewed as like a bad thing for leather because so many people be like, ah, don't get your saddle wet, and they like panic. Uh, but yeah, no, I've started doing this and my saddle looks great. Do you have any like favorite brands for like creams to put on for um, moisturizing the saddle or just well, for, like for oils? I like the um, Hydrophane. If I want to break my bridle quick in on my saddle, I use that once, twice at the most three times. Mm -hmm. or cream any company what uses leather balsam there's multiple company uses Perfect. i like beeswax cream too oh beeswax cool and it's super super sticky mm -hmm. and if you're not constantly wiping the dust off you're ending up with a layer of dirt film created through all the dust yeah. that so it's a it smells good it's natural but man does that collect a lot of dust you know, yeah. the, the saddle looks good, and then you ride once through a dust cloud, and then it says, "Wow!" <laughs> right? It's so, but it's good for leather. It just doesn't look good on the saddle. Yeah. Um, okay. cool. Soap, I would recommend glycerin soap. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple, then. Yeah. yeah. And again, wipe it off. Nobody leaves it in the laundry, hair, shampoo, dishwasher, etc. TV. Yeah. No, that that's so good to know. It's it's funny that it's like not a common theme for people to know that because yeah I've had even with me like riding in the rain or if people saw me wiping my saddle down with water they'd be like oh my god what are you doing to your tack so it th this is very helpful because these are things that I think a lot of people don't necessarily know um unless it's just me but I don't think so oh have you ever gone swimming with a horse yeah yeah I have not for a while but yeah not how with long, tack on how long have you gone swimming um probably only like 20 minutes 15 yeah. minutes okay yeah. so where you and the horse completely were submerged for that long that's a long time no not completely submerged for that long probably yeah completely submerged for i don't know five minutes that's right yeah. so that's normally what people do five to ten minutes right yeah so when we make a leather saddle we submerge the leather for 25 minutes to make it supple and to form it and to work with it 25 mm -hmm. minutes in wow. solid water so you could go with your saddle swimming on the ocean. The problem would be the salt, no problem. You just take your horse and wipe it off. Mm -hmm. Every time when we do a saddle fitting and people try a brand new saddle, I said, where's your wash rack? <laughs> then I put it in the corner and I horse that thing. And they cannot believe they want <laughs> this brand new saddle, hosing down like a Wintech saddle. And then I take a little, like, wipe it off with a towel, seconds. Then I take leather balsam wipe it and literally they watch this thing in front of them and says this looks like it was never on the horse mm -hmm. right and so the only down thing why you don't want to swim with your saddle because the wool in the panel in the seat foam mm -hmm. in your seat and the foam in the knee will act like a sponge yeah and that takes forever to dry mm -hmm. right but just hosing your saddle off quick it doesn't hurt the leather so long you put the cream on it. Mm -hmm. That's all. So wow. I hope we made that really, really, really clear. And shoot, we, we missed the mark. <laughs> it's already half an hour long. Oh, yes. No, but no. I really would like to talk about stirrup leather. And I uh, threw this up here, which is the human oh, foot. A foot. And yeah. um, I wanted to talk a little bit about stirrup leathers and stirrup irons. Or we're going to make this another time. What do you feel? Yeah, we could do it another time if, so that okay. we have more time because I think the tack cleaning stuff is really important too for everyone. So yeah, okay. perfect. Yeah, All thank right. you so much for joining again. And it's always it's always a pleasure. There's always so much to learn. And that's really cool to learn about the process of tanning leather and whatnot. Super. All right. Yeah. Thank time. you so much. Take care. You Don't too. To see you next time. Yeah, thanks.